Hello and welcome to In the Kitchen with Matt. I am your host, Matt Taylor. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make an amazing beef stew, more specifically a beef burgundy or beef bourguignon. This is probably the king of all beef stews. It's super yummy, it's pretty easy to do. There's a lot of steps, so don't let that um, scare you off, but each step is really easy. And this recipe is really close to the Julia Child's recipe. Um, some of the, most of the ingredients are about the same and some of the amounts are a little bit off, but in uh, all intents and purposes, it's really close to her recipe. Also, I'm gonna talk about this Dutch oven, enamel Dutch oven by Uno Casa and the benefits about owning a uh, Dutch oven and why you might wanna have one in your kitchen. Before we move on, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you won't miss out on any of my new videos. Let's get started. First, to take a closer look at this enameled Dutch oven by Uno Casa. And so first thing you notice is it's enameled on the outside and on the inside, it's enameled as well. So this enameled coating is really nice. It protects the cast iron. Also, it makes it so you don't have to season this. That enameled coating also is really easy to clean. You can just clean it with hot uh, soapy water with a sponge or something like that. You don't use metal on it when you uh, clean it. And this, this one by Uno Casa has a, a dark interior. Sometimes they'll be light or they'll be dark interiors. And um, one thing that I wanna show you about this lid, it's a nice heavy lid. It has these ridges on it, these little spikes. And what those do is it allows the condensation from the steam from the food to come up and then it'll drip off these back down onto the food, helping to make the food, the meat more, more specifically, more tender. Really, really neat. One reason why you might want a Dutch oven is because it is like the number one workhorse in the kitchen as far as pots go. You could use this pot pretty much for anything. If you could only own one pot, it would be a Dutch oven would be the way to go because you can bake with this, you can sear with it, you can deep fry with it, you can boil with it. Pretty much anything you wanna do, you can do with this. One thing I really like about this one is the handles are nice and big. Sometimes they'll be really narrow, the handles on the Dutch ovens, but this handle is nice and big, really easy to grip, which I really like. Because of the enameled coating, it's not gonna rust. Traditional Dutch ovens that don't have the coating uh, will rust. Another thing that I notice, one thing that I love about this is the size of this. It, it holds a full six quarts, which is a lot of, a lot. So you can make a lot of food in this. And as bonus accessories, it comes with a silicone mat, and it comes with these little silicone uh, grippers where you can grab the top of your lid with it. Grab the sides like this with it. Pretty neat. All right, let's get on to making this beef bourguignon. Let's start with about two and a half to three pounds of chuck roast. And I just cut it up into about one and a half inch uh, to two inches squares. And what we're gonna do is we'll take some kosher salt, some pepper, And let's just sit, let this sit a little bit while we cook up the bacon. All right, so I have my Dutch oven on my stovetop set to medium heat and you let it heat up. And then I want to add in my bacon. This is about four strips of bacon that I just cut up into little squares. You could use more or less if you want of the bacon. Oh, bacon, gotta love bacon. So let's just cook these down until they get nice and crispy and brown. Okay, once the bacon has gotten nice and brown, we want to just take it out. And I'm just using my slotted spoon here. This is a silicone spoon, really great utensil. And we'll just drain it a little bit and then add it to a plate with paper towel. And now what we do is we want to sear the steak. You only want about two tablespoons worth of oil or grease in there. And so if you have too much, like if you have bacon that's really thick and it does a lot of grease, then you wanna reduce some of it, but this looks fine. I'm gonna take my 
steak and I'm gonna put it down and we don't want to crowd it, but we wanna brown all the sides. And this process, browning all the meat, will take probably about 15 minutes total. And make sure you don't skip this step because this is gonna add tremendous flavor to your meat. All right, once I got them browned, I'm gonna take them, remove them, and put them on that same plate that I have the bacon. Also, make sure to trim some of the fat off from your chuck roast, all the real big pieces of fat. You can leave some of it on there. Okay, the last bit of the steak is ready to go. I'll remove it from the pan. And now we will add in one medium onion that I've sliced and we'll put in carrots. I have about six medium carrots that I peeled and just cut up into about two with two and a half inch chunks. More salt, kosher salt, a little pepper. And let's just render these down a little bit. Starting to build these flavors. Oh yeah, those onions really bring out flavor. We're gonna let the onions and carrots saute for about five minutes. Also at this point, I am going to preheat the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, after about five minutes of sauteing the onions and carrots, I'm gonna add in about five cloves of garlic that I minced up. I'm gonna give that a chance to cook a little bit. Just let the garlic saute in with the onions and carrots for about two to three minutes. Okay, now at this point, we want to add in our tomato paste. This is uh, two tablespoons of tomato, tomato paste. And let's just cook that down in there. And just kind of cook out some of that tomato paste flavor. All right, after about a couple minutes, we want to add in about three tablespoons of flour. And we want to cook that for a while just to kind of cook off some of that flour taste. And this is going to help thicken our stew later on. All right, after a couple minutes, you'll notice on the bottom, there's all this stuff on the bottom. It's called fond, and we want to get that up and remove that up. That's a lot of good flavor there. And so we, it's called deglazing the pan, and we're gonna deglaze it with some red wine. This is a Pinot Noir red wine. I don't drink alcohol, so I have no idea how good this is, but this is a 500 milliliters, a little bit over two cups. So let's put that in there and let it heat up and simmer a bit. And it's gonna pull up that stuff on the bottom of the pan. Once we start to see it bubbling, we will add in our beef and then our bacon. And then we'll add in about three tablespoons of fresh parsley, about one tablespoon of fresh thyme, and then a couple of bay leaves. We'll stir that in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then now we wanna take some beef broth and pour enough in there to cover the, well, just until it's about covering the top. About like that, which is about three cups. And now we put the lid on our Dutch oven and we are going to bake this in the oven at 325 Fahrenheit or 162 Celsius. And we're gonna bake it, braise it. We're gonna, it's called braising. We're gonna braise this for two and a half to three hours until the meat is nice and tender. After 90 minutes, we're gonna take it out of the oven and take a peek and give everything a good stir. Oh yeah. Come in here, lid back on into the oven for another hour to an hour and a half. All right, once we have about 45 minutes before our stew is gonna be done, I am going to take a small pot of water and bring it to a boil. And then I'm going to put in my pearl onions. And we're gonna just let them cook for about a minute. I'm just gonna just loosen up those skins. All right, that's good enough. I'm gonna remove that and um, drain it. And then what we do is we, after we drain, drain them, we'll take it and 
we'll cut off the edge, cut off the, the end, and then squeeze off the all the skin like that. Okay? Awesome. Let's do that with all of these. All right, now let's bring these over to the stovetop. All right, so I have a skillet here with a couple tablespoons of oil in it um, and the heat set to medium. And then once the oil in the pan starts to shimmer, we can go ahead and put in the onions. And, we're, and we will just saute these a bit until they get some nice color on them. I will add just a little bit of salt with them. Once they start to brown a little, the onions, what I like to do, I'm going to add in my mushrooms and you could cook these separate. A lot of the times the mushrooms are cooked separate with some butter. I'm just going to put them in here as well with the onions and just saute both of these together. Okay, after about five minutes or so, we've gotten some nice color on the onions and on the mushrooms. Let's add in just a little bit of beef stock, remaining beef stock that we have, and deglaze that pan a little. Don't need to do too much. Maybe about a half a cup. And we'll just let this sit for about 20 minutes or so, and it's going to just render off that liquid a little bit. All right, it's time to pull the stew out of the oven. And uh, these have reduced down a bit. I'm going to just remove these and put them in another bowl here. And we can add this straight to the stew or we can just serve it on the side with it. Whatever you'd like to do. All right, I pulled this out of the oven. Take off the lid, oh yeah. Looks awesome. That looks so good. Doesn't that look amazing? Yummy. What we want to do is we want to find those bay leaves and remove those. And then what I want to do to serve up is I'm going to take my slotted spoon and serve up some. And now I'm going to add some of my onions and mushrooms and then come in here with some fresh parsley and garnish it. And there we have it, beef bourguignon. And then come in here with a fork and you can see how easy that meat just kind of pulls apart. Oh yeah, fork tender. Yummy! And that is how I make beef bourguignon. Pretty easy to do. If I can do it, you can do it. If you want to pick up that enamel Dutch oven by Uno Casa, down below I'll put a link where you can get it. It is an affiliate link, so I will get a small percentage of the sale, but it won't cost you any extra. I'm Matt Taylor. This has been another episode of In the Kitchen with Matt. Thank you for joining me. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or requests, put them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thumbs up, down in the corner, push it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Take care. Time for me to dive into this. Oh yeah, my favorite part of the show. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah. Mm. So yummy.